So I just recently passed my ECPPT V2 exam. Wow, that's a handful. And I want to give you guys some tips on how you can prepare for it, how you can pass the exam and in the end even give you some tips on how to write the report because there is gonna be a report in this exam. I must say that I actually enjoyed the exam, maybe because I just enjoy hacking. I mean, it's also everything that I do on this channel. So it was just like recording a very long video for me. And I must say that I also finished up early because I used the tips that I'm gonna show you in this video, but first, a comment from the community. Guru Hari Haraon said, I love the way you talk to yourself. One of the funny as well as the informative CTF player I seen in YouTube. Thank you very much, Guru. I'm not actually talking to myself. I think I'm talking to you. Let me know in the comments down below. What exam should I tackle on next? The OSCP or the ECPTX? So how do you successfully prepare for this exam? Well, first of all, what I did was making videos on YouTube. I also had some experience working as a penetration tester and I have a bachelor's degree in computer science, which is also very helpful when it comes to this kind of stuff. But one huge help was the labs and courses provided by INEE. Now INEE is the learning platform from eLearn Security themselves and they provide a ton of courses like cybersecurity courses, coding courses, cloud courses, everything that you want to learn about computer science, you can do this on their platform. As soon as you sign up for one of their premium plans, you even get a 50% discount on your next exam voucher. And they have been a huge help in providing me the tools, resources and labs to pass my ECPPT V2 exam. So I'm very glad that they actually contacted me and sponsored my video. So head over to the link that you're seeing popping up over here on screen and sign up for an INEE premium subscription today so you can learn about hacking and get certified. Another step I took to practice for the exam was to solve multiple hack the box challenges. I did a total of 20 hack the box challenges just to prepare for this exam. Now I didn't solve all of them by the, myself. I actually used some walkthroughs for a majority of them just to get like the feel and hang of it. And because it was so much stuff to learn and practice during one month. Oh, did I mention that I only prepared myself for one month? If your ECPPT V2 exam is up next month, this video is gonna help. Now I did over 20 challenges, about 16 of those were challenges where I used a walkthrough either fully or to some part to solve the challenge and four of those were actually challenges that I solved all by myself. So if you're stuck on any hack the box challenge or want to learn more about hack the box challenges or want to watch somebody solve multiple hack the box challenges, subscribe to this channel. And the last two things which you need to practice are actually how to perform buffer overflows. You can find a really helpful link down in the description below where you can practice multiple buffer overflow attacks on different applications and you can learn all the fundamentals about buffer overflows from either this video which is very old on my channel or also via the INEE labs which I mentioned before. Just check out the link in the description if you're interested in their training. And another huge part in the exam is pivoting. Now if you're not aware what pivoting is, is basically as soon as you hack one PC inside their network you're gonna use that PC to hack the other PC deeper down in the network, kind of using it like a tunnel or proxy. You want to really hone in on that skill. There are some labs and slides in the INE training, so make sure to check those out and maybe even practice the lab a couple of times. Now, an additional skill which has basically nothing to do with hacking, but more with like the boring part of penetration testing is you should be able to write a professionally great report. INEE and eLearn Security, they give you like a 15 page PDF where they explain you how to write a report, but you would really benefit from writing a couple of mock reports. So if you're practicing some hack the box challenges, write a report or two of one of those challenges. I did that as well while solving the hack the box challenges. I wrote some reports, I showed them to friends, I showed them to family and whatever so that you get like 
like multiple inputs on what could be improved because one section, especially the management summary, has to be for non-technical or management positions. They need to understand what are the dangers, what are the implications, what is the problem with our security and it's basically the part in your report where you prove that you're worth your money. So make sure to learn about report writing. I have a video popping up somewhere over here. I'm not sure which side it is on YouTube, but uh, you're gonna figure it out as soon as the eye pops out. And once you've practiced all that, you should be good to go in terms of skills. There are a couple of things that I would prepare as well, which is you need to have a Windows 7 or Windows 32-bit machine or VM ready for local debugging. Maybe also prepare another Windows VM just in case if you need anything else and if you're like me and you're using a MacBook M1 or an ARM based computer you really need to prepare a Kali VM and make sure that you also have a Kali VM which is not ARM based on another computer in case you get some difficulty with the network but I will tell you more in the next section which is the exam. Well, I really can't tell you too much. You have to perform a penetration You've test. You've got seven days to perform the penetration test on the infrastructure and an additional seven days to write the report. The main goal of this penetration test is to basically root all the machines that you can find or gain the highest privilege possible on any machine that you can find and hack into. But in order to be able to do that, you need to do some pillaging or data harvesting on the machines you already cracked because you may find some valuable information about the infrastructure there so don't underestimate the pillaging phase make sure that you really do a thorough 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 check of the server or machine you just hacked in case you find some additional information that would help you hack another machine. Additionally, you should find as many vulnerabilities as possible. In the best case, you will even exploit all these vulnerabilities. I found some vulnerabilities which I just checked for but didn't exploit since I already gained the highest privilege on the machine and I noted that in the report. And since we're talking about the report, make sure that you're documenting and screenshotting everything as you are hacking away in the lab because you will be really grateful that you did that once the reporting phase comes on. I did that when I was hacking into machines, I was screenshotting everything, copy pasting all the information that I needed for the report, writing down little notes in my reporting document. It doesn't have to be real sentence or anything. I just basically do notes, kind of a walkthrough through the entire machine. So in case everything crashes, I can use what I wrote to hack again into it without having to do the work. This way I was able to be really fast with the reporting phase. I just had like that you, um, you had one day of the reporting phase where I actually was writing the report. All the other time I was just writing the notes. And by using this strategy, I was able to hand in the exam earlier. I handed it in after eight days. I was basically finished after five days. I took a little break. On the seventh day, I wrote the report, grabbed some missing screenshots that I forgot along the way. Then on the eighth day, I was able to finalize the report and hand it in. I made my report using Markdown and Pandoc and R Markdown and Python, but you can use whatever you want. But if you're feeling unsure and you think that you're gonna miss some things, you can record your screen using OBS. That's what I do when I do the hacking challenges. It's a really easy to use software. So make sure that the installed version of the Metasploit framework is a stable one because I was using a very unstable one and it crashed all the time. If you get stuck during the exam, go back to step number one, apply the hacking penetration testing methodology and make sure that you're not doing the mistakes that I talk about in this video over here.